and hello and welcome into the ONTV Fantasy Football League podcast. I'm your host, Joey Tysig, and my partner, Joe Johnson. And we have Sammy Taramina back in the building. <laughs> and to welcome back. Talk Hi. about his week of fantasy football season. How's it going? You what know, is what 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 happened in the past week? Well, you know, I've just my in my three leagues this week, obviously. Um I've had some um you know, in this league here I've had I've been up and down. I don't know why. Um my family league, I, I had a tough loss to my cousin. Um, you know, that's the Terramina League. Of course, Ian was on here last week, and he talked about that league. It's a really difficult league. Yeah. Um, and then in my um, public league team, I have a friend of mine who's an 06 alum who's in Colorado, and we started off 0-4, and now we're 6-5 and on the year. Ooh, so nice we've comeback. actually turned it around, and um, – we are actually doing. I mean, we. I mean, we start. We 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 did a tag team with the league at, with with our with our team. We thought about with we thought about doing it with this team, but mm-hmm. you know, but like I just decided, you know what I mean? Like um, you know, but I mean, she does give me some insight on all my teams. I mean, like so, I give credit my to my friend in Colorado. Of course, the name of my team is named after another friend of mine who's in South Carolina, and you know. Of course, Ohio State plays Michigan this week, so yeah, big week. I know she's a, she's she's a big book guy, so <laughs> and I know, and I'm rooting hard for Ohio State too to knock off Michigan. <laughs> yeah, it's a big weekend for football in general. We got the Thanksgiving game. We have a Black Friday game, yeah, yeah which is wild, and then, brand new this year. Uh, some big college football games, and then your normal Sunday football games. Mm-hmm. But uh, we brought Sammy on this episode uh, after we brought Ian last week to show when he beat me, and now we brought Sammy on. To talk about him beating Joe this past week. I thought we so, locked the front door. We're who, just a glutton. We're in. just gluttons for punishment. It yeah. seems like yeah, lately. I kind of feel like punishment's always good for you, Joe. You know what I mean? <clears throat> punishment. Then again, I do remember the last time. I think I, I think I was on the last time I beat. I, was it I beat you or was it I beat the week? <laughs> Maybe. Have you swept me? Um, yes, I did sweep. I don't remember. But hey, to be fair, Joe, you beat me early on in the season. I did. I, yeah. I, I seem to recall starting off strong, but I have now lost three in a row. Yeah. So uh, I need to turn things around or I'm going to keep sinking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I'm still up. I'm in second place, but uh, we'll get to my team in a minute. It was a, it was a rough, rough week. Yeah, you know fantasy. what? Looking at the scores here, this was a really down week for scoring. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do we got? One, two, three teams failed to crack a hundred. <clears throat> three of these matchups could have been the game of the W E A K. There were several wins with uh, the uh, U points. Mm-hmm. Um, the one game that stands out, which is I'm sure going to be the first one we talk about, is yep. uh, Tracy's top notch team versus halftime honeybees. They both. Blew up, and unfortunately for Tracy, she would have beaten every single team in the league yeah. except the team she faced. That's yeah. that's rough. And, you know, I know Tracy was uh, yelling at the TV watching the game last night because of it, um, but I mentioned to her this morning, actually, in my ESPN league, I am 6-5. and five. I have the most points scored by about 30 or 40 points. But I also have the most points against me. Yeah. So I am six and five with the most points, and that doesn't happen too often. Usually, you know, you can be the most points and maybe be third or fourth, but to be where I'm at, like I'm in like fifth or sixth place, six and five, almost five hundred with the most points. It's, ugh, it's that's frustrating. Brutal. I mean, yeah. that's really brutal. I mean, like, cause I've I've been in, I've had teams like that, and it's not it's not as um. You know, it, it's brutal. I mean, yeah. like, uh, you know, you look at it with us this year, Malik's kind of in that similar spot. Yeah, he I is. mean, like, he's... Started off kind of slow, mm-hmm. but and, he is, yeah. But I, I, you know, when you have the most points, you're winning games, but then you're giving up points and all that. That's, yeah. that's never fun. I mean, right. like, you know, you're like going like, what do I have <laughs> to do to win these games? What do I have to do? Yeah. I mean, that's basically how... um. Sometimes it's how the game works. You know, yep. that's how fantasy football works. That's why we play the game. <laughs> yes, that is. You want to hear something crazy? Years ago in the big money league I used to be in, I would write articles uh, for the league. And I decided, like, late in the season, <clears throat> I was going to I was gonna do a little column about which players have scored the most points this season in a mm-hmm. single performance. And so I looked up, like, I looked at all the past games, and I looked up the quarterback to see who put up the biggest performance at quarterback. I found it. I looked to see who owned that player and who they played against. So I did quarterback, found the team that owned him when he went off, 
and I noticed that he played against me. And then I did running back, found the highest running back point total, looked to see who he played against. It was against me. Wide receiver, tight end, defense, all the biggest performances throughout the season were scored against me. Yeah. What are the odds of that? Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And both Joe and I have been in the the experience of losing by like half a point, less than a point. Uh, asked that, me that a couple of weeks ago, and it's Ian. Good yeah. grief. I've lost by point one before, and it's that's it's brutal. it's horrible. Yes. Well, that's the frustrating thing uh, for Tracy is that uh, she had the lead fairly late in the game, and yeah. then uh, Swift had a big run. I think he had like a forty yard run, and that mm -hmm. was it. That yeah. one run. Uh, earned uh, earned Becky a, a win, and he also had that touchdown early on in the in the game to kind of get him rolling, and then yeah, he had a couple big runs towards the end of the game, and that just kind of sealed the deal. Uh, so again, for Becky's team, she seems to do well when Tyreek Hill and Tua do well. That's kind of how her mo her mo works. Uh, she finally got production out of Tony Pollard, which we haven't seen in a few weeks. Got a touchdown. Yeah. Uh, and since week one, mm -hmm. he has not scored a touchdown since week one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Um, and then on uh, Tracy's side, Brandon Ayuk's had a really solid season. Devontae Adams is kind of coming back to life. Um, David Montgomery just seems like he's just due for a touchdown almost every game. And then Brian Robinson has been catching a ton of passes with Antonio Gibson being out uh, for Washington. And, of course, that Dallas defense yeah. has been producing for Tracy all season long. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the only thing that she could have changed is uh, going away from her two tight end set that she's been playing with Sam Laporta and TJ Hawkinson. It's worked out for the most part, um, but she might have to change that up since Devin Singletary and Gus Edwards have been playing pretty well as of lately. Well, obviously, with Singletary, obviously, the um, injury to, um, to um, Damian Pierce. Damian Pierce has been really been instrumental for that so yeah you know and I, and i'm not tracy here so i'm not i'm not gonna tell her what to do but maybe <laughs> going more of like a running back type off yeah. option with the flex yeah i would helpful. never ever put a tight end in the flex no, spot and had no. she started edwards or singletary she would have got the win yes. so let that be a lesson i wouldn't be opposed to it because laporta has played so well but he has been on a kind of a downtrend in the last uh maybe couple weeks um but i think he has more upside i'm the guy that doesn't like the gus edwards touchdown dependent running backs so i don't fully blame her but well uh, we've talked about that that ravens backfield before where mm -hmm. you got edwards you got mitchell you got uh you got the Justice lamar Hill. it's just stealing stealing touchdowns so it's very very risky to start a ravens running back but then when you see those kind of numbers you're like yeah maybe i should Maybe the upside is too good to pass up. Gus Edwards cost yeah. me in my um. If I played Gus Edwards, I would have knocked out my cousin and my family this, this week. <laughs> mm. Yeah, you know. And then we go from one close matchup to another close matchup. Marie just barely beating Malik's last place team, one eighteen point seven six to one hundred and seventeen even. And this was another game that came down to Monday night. I think they were a three point difference between mm. the two. Malik had a three point lead. Uh, he had Pacheco going on Monday night, and Marie had Travis Kelsey. Both had very pedestrian games. Pacheco did good on his runs, but didn't get in the end zone. Travis Kelsey did find the end zone, had seven catches, but didn't do a lot with it outside of that. He had a fumble. That. Yeah, he had yeah, the a fumble. Costly fumble. Almost, yep. almost ruined Marie's chances of winning this game. Yeah. Um, and that's when she was yelling at the TV. Because <laughs> uh, her and Malik have a little bit of a rivalry of, of trash talking, so... That was an important win for her. Um, and Malik, man, we saw the repercussions of Jamar Chase not having Joe Burrow in this game. Mm -hmm. Luckily got a touchdown at the very end of the game just to salvage his day. And then Travis Etienne, who's been basically money this whole season, has uh, struggled the last couple weeks. So we'll see there. And then Murray, kind of the same thing. Derrick Henry is – he does not look like Derrick Henry right now. I was screaming at my – computer when I was looking at the score. Um I was honestly I was rooting hard for Malik because of <laughs> that was gonna standings, impact my yeah. standings obviously. Mm -hmm. But um you know I thought to myself if Marie would have lost, if you would have lost, you know what I mean? <laughs> because then everything would have just like turned in a in a in a topsy. I mean like obviously you look at you know obviously because I know I gotta play Marie at the end of the year mm -hmm. and and I'm curious to see how that goes. But um 
But um, give credit where credit's due. I mean, Malik, Marie found a way to win, and you yeah. know what I mean? And Malik, you know, more than capable of scoring over 140 points. And, yeah. you know, I got to get credit where credit's due. Marie won that game, found a way to win it. She got it with special teams, too. Funny enough, Justin Tucker and the Buffalo defense mm -hmm. uh, yeah. giving her 32 points combined. So that was that was pretty big. I'm looking at bench points. Uh, Lawrence, Trevor Lawrence had a big game, but yeah. you, no one in their right mind would start him over Allen, who's been pretty much, uh, despite having kind of an off season, Allen still is right up, the, up there at the top yeah. as far as quarterback production. But mm -hmm. uh, he put up 22 while Trevor Lawrence put up 32 that yeah. could have been a difference in the game too but like I said how do you start Lawrence especially last week against the uh, Niners he just had a game to forget yeah. so he's been struggling a lot um when you look at the Buffalo defense obviously with Zach Wilson getting benched I mean like that says a lot right there mm -hmm. you know basically like you know the Jets offense has been a complete disaster all season long yep. without Aaron Rodgers yeah it's always one to take an advantage of mm -hmm. um and then the matchup that we're here for the Green Buckeye <laughs> taking down the Hollywood Blockbusters. Now, you know what? <clears throat> I um, When I saw you earlier that day, I pretty much conceded a loss. I didn't think I had a chance. The frustrating thing is, is when I got home from work and turned on the game, I was winning. I couldn't <laughs> believe it. I took the lead. and I, I, was, sh I, I was shocked. You I know, had I Mahomes going, going in that game, the Monday night game. You had three players going in that game. I was shocked. I'm going like, What's going on here? So I'm talking to Anthony, my brother. I'm going like, what's going on here? <laughs> they you know? held A.J. Brown to, uh, the Kansas City defense held A.J. Brown to 1.8. That's unheard of. I'm like, I might win this thing. And mm. after a half of football, I was starting to get convinced. Um, then uh, Hertz had a rushing touchdown, which put you back in the lead. And then I thought, okay, let's go, Mahomes. Let's uh, let's drive for a touchdown. And he was moving the ball, but he kept getting these drops from. Uh, we had the fumble from Kelsey, and mm -hmm. then uh, who who had the big drop Valdez, on the Scantling. oh the Scantling. drop on the goal line that hit him in the hands. Yeah, that might have been the difference. And then to seal the deal, they get the brotherly shove. You get the rushing touchdown, and that's all she wrote. Mm -hmm. You know what's happened to me the last two weeks, honestly, is I've got players who have sealed the deal. Two weeks ago, it was Russell Wilson to, De to Javante um, Williams. Mm -hmm. This week, it's Jalen Hurts slamming the door. Yep. I mean, I've got proven closers in my league. I'm not, <laughs> obviously, Keenan Allen had a big game, obviously. I got Saquon Barkley went off for 30 points. Saquon was huge. And he was huge. He had two passing touchdowns against your defense, by the way. You start, I don't know why you started Washington, but you let Tommy DeVito score three touchdowns on you. But I, I think, honestly, here, when you it's look the Giants. at Giants. They did get nine sacks, to be fair. You got nine uh -huh. sacks, but you let Tommy DeVito score three touchdowns on you. So, basically, I was very pleased with Saquon, what he did. He caught two touchdowns. Um, bothered by my Eagles, obviously. Um, but when I look at the, um, but when I look at the uh, performance of my team, I mean, I've, I've shown it all year long. That I've had resilience despite guys that have single-digit points. You know what I mean? I've found ways to win games, whether it's Keenan Allen having to score 40 points or if it's like a balanced scoring effort. You know, so I've found ways to win. So usually if you find ways to win, that makes you really good in fantasy football. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to say, going back to draft day, my biggest mistake on draft day, I hate to say this, was drafting Mahomes so early. When your brother was on and uh, Mahomes was on a bye week, I said something along the lines of, oh, I have a quarterback controversy coming in the next week because while Mahomes had a bye week, Purdy had a pretty pretty good game. And uh, you kind of laughed at me and said, yeah, I don't know if that's a quarterback controversy, Mahomes versus Purdy. Well, I put Mahomes in my starting lineup. He scored 16 while Purdy put up 26 and had a perfect game. Three touchdowns, 300 yards, over 300 yards. I think I'm done with Mahomes. I, see, I'm going to I'm gonna just cut my losses, bench him to teach him a lesson, and put Purdy back in my lineup. Okay. Oh, I just, I, um, I it mean, cost me, it, it, he's cost me games I think, all season long. I think our logic is correct, though, because you got to imagine <laughs> if we would have had a different tone if those uh, mishaps didn't happen. He would have had four touchdowns. He would have had 
you know, he had an ugly, of yards. ugly pick in the end zone, and uh, that was brutal. I, I'm just, I'm burnt out on Mahomes. I will yeah. never, ever draft Mahomes again. He is, <laughs> as I like to say, dead to me. And I, I pulled up the uh, the draft list real quick here just to find out where you could have gone otherwise. And honestly, it's not that great. So you drafted Patrick Mahomes in the second round, third pick in the second round. Right. The players that went after you, Devontae Adams, struggled a lot this season. Yeah. Derrick Henry, been almost irrelevant all season. Amon Ross St. Brown. Now, there's the one you maybe missed on. After that, Tony Pollard. You already yeah. cut ties with him in our other league. Yeah. And I'm then you got you got Pollard. Josh Allen, who's been a turnover machine. He does put up points, but, you know. Uh, and then Cooper Cup, who's been injured. J.K. Dobbins, who's out for the season. Yeah. So, realistically, that, like, round two, round three, it was just bad all around. Who, did, who was my next pick after Mahomes? I'm curious. Uh, Jameer Gibbs. Gibbs, I, I drafted Gibbs after Mahomes? Yep. Who were my first two picks? Uh, Mahomes was your second pick. Oh, he was my second pick. I thought he was my third pick. That's even worse. You went Bijan Robinson into Patrick Mahomes. And then followed up with Gibbs. Yeah, yeah. that was a huge mistake. I I, I wish I would have let him slide, and I wish someone would have stolen him from me, and I probably would have been upset <laughs> at the time, but now I would be breathing a sigh of relief. And that that's going to be my strategy next year is just get a quarterback later. Yeah, that's why I say a lot of the times if if you can wait on quarterback, it's usually a good thing. Unless Jalen Hurts is available. Yeah, Jalen Hurts, but even him, there's a point where like next year because he's playing really good again, he might jump into that second round. But right. it's just it's so hard because quarterbacks, ju- at least in normal leagues, do not have as much value because the rushing aspect gives them six points compared to the four points for the passing touchdowns. But there's so many guys that can give you, you know, a solid amount of points for the quarterback position that that disparity is not as big as when you wait on like a running back or something yeah. like that. So it's always a big risk to go after those top guys for quarterback. In the, it's, uh, it's worked out the last year or two. Yeah. Um, but this year we're kind of seeing it come back to a to a normal means. In the other league that you and I are in, I let all the top quarterbacks go. We're in an auction league in the, in the other league. And I ended up picking up cousins because I'm like, well, somebody's throwing the ball to Jefferson and, uh, and those guys. And that, that mm-hmm. he played really, really well. He was like a top five quarterback until he got hurt. And now Dobbs is playing really well. So in hindsight, if I would have drafted cousins at the beginning of the season, mm-hmm. my record would look completely different than what it is. Right. And mm-hmm. I could have got him late. Well, and you think too, like, uh, you think to like my draft maybe because you guys both drafted quarterbacks kind of high and now it doesn't work in hindsight because Joe Burrow is not out for the season. Um, but you can't predict but, injuries. Yeah. Right. But I got Joe Burrow, one of the top quarterbacks in the league in the sixth round, I believe yeah. how much of a difference between him and Mahomes is there that there's that four round difference. That's right. where it's, mm-hmm. it's hard to figure out. I learned my strategy. lesson. It comes with strategy. Though, yeah. You look at draft. It, it really does. It really does. So, yeah, unfortunate loss for Joe again. We'll look at the standings towards the end, but uh, you're on the verge. I hate God, to imagine say. if you and I had played last week. I would have beaten you by .06. Ooh, that would have been rough. Ooh, that could uh, be a, a, a little insight into what might happen this weekend. Yeah, well, let's talk about my team real quick here because <laughs> there's a lot, of, a lot of things that are going to have to happen. <laughs> I am curious to see how you do because you lost Burrow, you lost Andrews, both done for the year. So I'm curious to see what you do on the waiver wire. I mean, you got to figure out your quarterback situation. you got to figure out your tight end situation. Now, lucky for you, my tight end situation is a mess as well. So, you know, so we might be bound for tight end. And luckily, I pre-planned this. So I beat Jordan this week, luckily, 110 to 82, basically, 83. His team struggled. He had some guys on by that had been helping his team. Uh, so he was, you know, kind of needing the commanders to go off. It didn't go very well against the Giants. However, like Sammy alluded to, Joe Burrow, I lost early in this game, lost him to the season. Uh, he scored eight points. I lost Mark Andrews in this game in the first drive of the game. He scored four points. Uh, I lost Cooper Cup to an ankle injury. Sounds like he might be back, but he scored two points. And then I lost Devon Achan, who just came back from IR. He yeah. scored one and a half points. Revolving door. 
You know, there's a scene in uh, Gone with the Wind where this camera pulls back and you see all the Civil War wounded on the ground and on stretchers and bandages, and it just keeps getting bigger. And I'm like, that looks like Joey's team right now. Yeah, That just is Joey's team. Literally. Walking yeah. wounded, man. They, I couldn't believe your luck this past weekend. Yeah, so I got really lucky with the guys that did play, put up a good amount of points. Tank Dell had a huge game, 28.9. McCaffrey keeps doing his thing, 21. Rashad White has been a second half like gem for my team. I thought yeah. about dropping him at one point. No, he came out. He put out 17.8. Tyler Bass, my kicker, put up 17 points to help me out. And uh Joe's defense that he dropped helped me out. Uh gave me nine points. Although it it was the same amount of points that the commanders uh <laughs> got. So that was a wash there for you, but yeah, I've been streaming defenses. Sammy, do you do the same thing? I I try yeah, to pick I, up I, defenses I, I, that have good matchups. I do the same thing. I mean, like honestly, I mean, like you know, when you look at it, I've had Miami's defense one year. Heck, even against Malik, I started Jacksonville's defense. They looked horrible against Houston. I'm minus one. Yeah, and but I I usually I've got the Eagles defense usually, and but I but at times I've I've when I find a defense on the waiver wire, I will pick it up whether it's Jets defense. Mm-hmm. Miami defense. Yep. I'll pick up. Um, I mean, like Cleveland's defense. I just took that from Tracy. They've been surprisingly I mean, good. Yeah. And then, so I mean, I do stream defense at times. I mean, this mm-hmm. might be the first time in a while that I might not stream a defense this week. Yeah. Now, your, uh, your brother was hurt by the injury bug too. He lost Kenneth Walker in that yeah. game, and I don't mm-hmm. know what his status is. It says questionable right now. I don't know if he's going to miss any time, but it that really sounds, hurt. Sounds like he's going to miss their Thanksgiving game at least. Oh, uh, wow. Well. So, yeah, that'll be a, an interesting one. For me, however, luckily, uh, a while ago, I noticed that Kyler Murray was on the waiver wire, and I picked him up a couple weeks ago while he was still on IR. So I stashed him. Now that has luckily paid off for me. So I will slot Kyler Murray right into my starting lineup. Now the thing that stinks is going into this week, because I had so much depth, I had to make a lot of big changes because A-Chan was coming off IR, Kyler Murray was coming off IR, I had to make legal roster moves. So I had to put them back in. I ended up dropping Dalton Schultz, my backup tight end. Luckily, I got him back because his waiver ended Sunday morning. Oh, wow. But I had to drop the Saints defense, who I wanted for the fantasy playoffs because they have a favorable schedule, and I try to look ahead sometimes. Also... With Dalton Schultz, I ended up dropping Calvin Ridley, who put up 36 <laughs> points this week. I think he was yeah. the number one or like number two wide receiver on the week. Yeah, he was part of the perfect lineup this week. Yeah. I talked to uh, yeah. my assistant principal at Oakview Middle School about this, and he said, you better go get him. Sometimes when you have a wealth of riches, it's uh, it's rough out there. So, so I had is to make he tough... on the waiver wire right now? He is now? on yeah. the waiver Uh-oh. wire. Uh-oh. Might be a mad scramble. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he is out there. I know I'm not going to get him, so I've already <laughs> shifted my gears for uh, the waiver wire. Um, but luckily, I'm going to have Jonathan Taylor back this week. Puka Nakua, I'll have to decide between him and Cup. The Rams' offense is awful to watch, so I don't, I don't know if I trust them. Adam Thielen maybe getting up back on track. Um, but all of a sudden, my team is a big question mark. So, You know, I have A-Chan in the other league, and I was faced with the same dilemma that you had, like, Okay, he's coming off injury, so he's well rested. Mm-hmm. But there's always that risk that he's going to get re-injured. And but I I was afraid of not starting him and seeing him go off for three touchdowns. So yeah. I threw him in my starting lineup and got burnt. And that's what I was doing because I had Joe Burrow and Mark Andrews already out for the season at that point, and they put up barely any points. So I thought, oh man, I I need to get this win to lock myself into the playoffs and make sure that I'm good to go. And uh, so I was like, I need extra points. And I thought my upside is Devon Achan. And then he gets me one and a half points. <laughs> Luckily, I still won, like I said. But it yeah. was it was a rough week for me. And a little bit scary moving forward. I'm going to have to make some tough decisions. And finally, we have Ian's team taking on Drake's Wasteland Wanderers, who <laughs> are basically a dumpster fire at this point. Yep. That's basically it. He started a guy on a bye week. He started a guy on IR. I don't mm-hmm. know why he doesn't do that when I play him. Um, <laughs> and but, why yeah. would he do that against Ian Weatherspoon? I don't know. Yeah. And, of course, look what happened. So yeah. Ian gets a win with 108 points. Yep. Uh, now, to be fair, there's not really anybody on his bench that would have made a difference. 
Um, uh, maybe if we made the right, right ma- quarterback. Maybe if we made the right waiver moves, uh, he could have gotten something uh, by playing certain people. But the guys that he has on his bench as of now would not have made a difference. But I'm usually on the waiver wire almost every single day. Yeah. Yep. I'm always checking too. Mm-hmm. Um, so speaking of the waiver wire, we'll go over that real quickly. Um, some doofus dropped Calvin Ridley, so he's out there. <laughs> I'd say he's the number one claim <laughs> the, that you could pick up. Um, Josh, Josh Downs coming off his bye might be a good waiver wire pickup. Um, I know there's guys like Demario Douglas uh, for New England that's been getting a lot of looks lately. Romeo Dobbs, if you want to be against the Lions this week, I don't that's advise it. Tough matchup. But uh, those are a couple options. Like we said last week, we're towards the end of the season. There's not too many crazy waiver wire options that you're going to get, except for Calvin Ridley. But if uh, if Cup uh, doesn't play, I don't know where he is on that. I've heard the uh, experts say go after Tutu Atwell, who uh, catches touchdowns when uh, Cup or Nakua are hurt. So that might be something to look at. If but you got you want to watch Cup status. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so now looking on to Week Twelve. Happy I, Thanksgiving. I get to play the Hollywood blockbusters before he goes on vacation. And funny enough, we are playing each other in both of our leagues this week. Yep. That so be so fun. it's going to be a real good Thanksgiving <laughs> special. I kind of wish at a time that me and Ian, how the schedule would have went, could have, should have had this happen. Yeah. I wanted to be able to make a custom schedule, but it, it gets so convoluted and trying to make things even. Well, I, I make it, I make that in my league. You know, when we had divisions in fa- my family league, we, um, yeah, I always did that. We make it play a division round twice. Uh, so Joe is not favored, but he doesn't have a set lineup right now. Daryl Henderson looks like he got cut by the Rams. He got flat out cut. That's because Kyron Williams is coming back. Oh, do I have him on? IR I believe you do. Someone, yeah, I have him on IR. So yep, I so, could pull him off IR. So that could be a boon him. to your offense. Um, I'm hoping that Patrick Mahomes has four touchdowns, maybe a rushing <laughs> touchdown, goes for 40 points, and he's on your bench. I would love that. Well, I also, and this is stupid logic, but I also want to watch some players on Thanksgiving. So I got the Purdy Debo uh, hookup. Mm -hmm. Uh, that'll be fun to watch and cheer on. Of course, I got Gibbs. That's going to be fun to watch on Thanksgiving. Yeah. Uh, So, yeah, I have a couple of Thanksgiving players going. I'd take the uh, Purdy McCaffrey uh, hookup. I've got a a, a strategy all laid out, though. So I'm not worried about it. For me, I only have two players. Well, I still – I think I'm going to go with San Francisco's defense because they might have – Seattle might have their backup quarterback in. Uh, So I might play my two San Francisco players, and then I have a lot going – um, on Sunday, Joe has a couple uh, other Thursday players with Washington's defense, if you're going to stay with them, um, and Dallas's tight end. Oh, plus Gibbs is playing on Thursday. So I'll, I'll kind of have a good idea of where our matchup is at yeah. right away, which will be nice and fun. Mm-hmm. But I'll have to figure out what I'm going to do with my team with all the injuries. Um, I do have Joe Burrow and Mark Andrews on my IR just as uh, a cheerleading team on my on my bench. <laughs> I should get rid of them. <laughs> Yeah. Nah, they're staying on the bench. And then we have another super good matchup. We got Malik's team playing Sammy's team. Right now, Sammy is favored 121 to 117. But uh, that's another close one to watch. Um, and that that one should be fun. Uh, let's see. Last time we played, it was 163-142. Whew. That that, was that's not- high scoring. Uh-huh. Definitely high scoring. Knowing Malik, as I know that, I, I know that he's capable. I mean, like. That's why you look at the strategy matchup I've got. I mean, like, I'm trying to avoid people playing on Thursday and Friday, mm-hmm. you know, hoping to have, like, players play late. Yeah. Because always been my strategy, always has been. If you play late, if you have guys playing late, and you're in a tight game, you have a chance to win it. And that's how yeah. I've always been. Yeah. And, you know, my strategy is not going to change, especially against Malik. Because um, I know how good he is. He can score in bunches. I mean... You know, it just comes down to matchup when it comes to having to play against a guy like Malik. I mean, he is mm-hmm. his team. I mean, he he's, he claims he's a last place team, but he's <laughs> not. But I know it's going to take a heck of an effort to beat him, and I've got a good strategy to do it. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. hoping my Eagles bounce back, especially what happened um against Kansas City. I know they got another daunting matchup, mm-hmm. to say the least. I mean, like yeah, it could be a shootout with Buffalo though. I expect it to be a shootout with Buffalo because like. 
I think Buffalo's defense is a little bit different than Kansas City's is. So, mm -hmm. but I expect. Um, so I'm really, and I think AJ Brown's gonna have a big game back. I think that um, AJ, I think AJ Brown's gonna be in for a revenge tour, and and why not? I mean, because I had Keenan Allen burn Malik last time I played him, mm -hmm. and why not have AJ Brown burn Malik again? Yeah, that's there's those are some good afternoon games. We have Philly taking on Buffalo, and then the Chargers taking on uh, Baltimore. Those should be some some fun games. I'm a little worried about that game because Baltimore's defense is really good. Yeah, yeah. They, they are. Well, you are currently favored right now by a small margin, <laughs> so that's going to be a fun one to watch. Yep, and all these projections are really close once again. Uh, as we look at Tracy's team playing Ian's team, it's a one-point difference right now uh, as far as their projections go, wow. which uh, should be pretty interesting. I got to get back in the chat for some reason. I don't know why it didn't let me chat. <laughs> Yeah, Ian and Tracy both are going to have some uh, some Thanksgiving uh, players. Tracy's going to have quite a few, actually, so Ian will have a good idea of where his uh, team will be at going into the Sunday matchups. Uh, yeah, she's got Goff. She's got Montgomery. Um, it looks like she's going to bench Laporta temporarily. So Yeah. Uh, she's got the Dallas defense, so, yeah, she's going to have fun on Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> Jordan's team playing Drake's team. Jordan should win that. Should win it, but we've seen Drake do some crazy things. If Drake wins the game by chance, it might just knock Jordan out of the playoffs yeah. completely, and we might have our team set, basically. Mm -hmm. And then we have Becky's halftime honeybees taking on Marie, uh, and Marie is favored right now 112 to 110. Uh, as I always say, be wary of Tua and Tyreek. But – uh. I don't know. Marie's team has just figured it out. Dak Prescott has been playing crazy, and he gets Washington on Thanksgiving, so that could be a big game for him. Um, but I will say, like I said, I mentioned earlier, Seattle playing the two Seattle wide receivers with potentially a Drew Locke at quarterback is a little concerning. That is yeah. not concerning. That's very concerning. <laughs> yeah. So Now, uh, you know, looking at last weekend and the fact that halftime honeybees put up the most points in the league last weekend that kind of supports your fear of facing halftime honeybees if she I'm is indeed afraid. the yeah. bottom seed i'm not afraid Here's she, why. her team is capable of putting up points in yeah. bunches i'm not afraid if i get her because right. i have uh, i have a double hookup too because yeah. i have i have the eagle connection against the fish connection mm -hmm. it is but uh yeah i don't want to play her so I would rather take somebody else, I guess. Almost almost anybody else, to be honest. Um, at least in that lower half of the teams. Um, look at the standings real quick. Maria's in first. I'm in second. Sammy moved up to third because he breaks the uh, the points tie uh, with Tracy and Ian. And then we got Malik in sixth. Uh, Becky in seventh. Joe in eighth. Jordan on the ninth. bubble. I'm on the bubble. And we have five teams locked into the playoffs. Five teams locked in, four teams fighting for the three spots left. Um, I believe if Malik gets a win this week, he's locked in. I wonder who he's playing this week. Yeah, yeah, that's a big game. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then Joe playing me is a big game. If Joe can knock me off, he pretty much puts himself in the clear. Same with Becky. Jordan basically needs to win out, and if you guys get a win, it kind of hurts his chances, so. Or down in the nitty gritty, but oh, he's uh, lost six in a row. Holy, moly. yeah, he's had some injury issues and just some just random mishaps, and his team just hasn't been playing as well. Marie so. has is on a six game winning streak. Yeah, yeah. I think that was her last loss. Yeah, it's it's been it's been a while, and she's only made two moves. Mm -hmm. Two that's two waiver wire moves, right? Yeah. So she. You got to give her credit. She I drafted make the, well. I make the most out of everybody. She's made l less moves than Drake. <laughs> I make the most Sammy out of everybody. Thirty-eight <laughs> waiver wire moves. Yeah, there'll be more after tomorrow. After um, after Wednesday. Well, that's because <laughs> Sammy dropped Zach Moss about ten times, <laughs> added him, and dropped him back and forth. Yeah, I wonder how that turned out. Uh, Joe, I wonder how that turned out. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's uh, that's the week eleven wrap up. I can't believe we're. At or week ten, where where are we at? In we're, the we just we're finished eleven. In week so eleven, we're yeah. heading yeah. to so we're week going to 12. twelve. Yeah, and then oh, we got I, Thursday. We got Thursday games. We got a Friday game where Zach Wilson got benched, and yeah. then and then we got we got Sunday, and then we have Monday night with 
the Vikings and the Bears. Yeah, and the thing that scares me the most is that after this week, we're on to week 13 where there's six teams on a bye. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. We have one more bye apocalypse before the end of the season. Yep. That can make or break someone. Yeah. But thank you, Sammy, for joining us on this episode, of course, to Trash Talk Joe. And uh, if you need to make any waiver claims on a Calvin Ridley, somebody go for him. I would appreciate it if it wasn't Sammy that got him. So I'm speaking <laughs> to Jordan. I'm speaking to Joe. Uh, you guys should try to take him. But uh, make any waiver moves. Make any lineup changes that you need to. And uh, good luck in uh, week 12. And happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Turkey Day, everybody. We'll see you next time.